Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather on the third day of April 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting the show today. Up first, uh, let's move on. That was last week's graphic there that some reason doesn't want to go away. Anyway, how's this weather graphic today? We've got uh, winter storm warnings for the uh, snow that's going on, moderate to heavy snow, which is uh, out or ends at 7 p.m. this evening, or I'm sorry, midnight for the uh, lower Yukon River Valley area there, Grayling and uh, Eastern Norton Sound, Mulatto Hills there, Norton Bay. That's out until midnight tonight. And then it uh, ends from west to east here throughout uh, the night tonight and during the day tomorrow, but is out until 7 p.m. Sunday for the uh, Fairbanks area and the Fort Yukon, Yukon Flats area there. And looking for uh, eight to, or five to eight inches of snow total with possibly some areas picking up 11 inches, uh, especially in and around the mid and upper Tanana Valley and into the uh, west or north, or there the northern part of the Western Alaska Range and otherwise, for the northern Cuscombe Valley, this winter weather advisory there for McGrath and the Seward Peninsula areas, as well as the northwest coast. Up on the Arctic coast, you have a winter weather advisory there, which is out uh, until 4 p.m. Sunday, currently out now, and for about another 24 hours, for uh, winds gusting to 35 miles an hour, and that's just due to blowing snow, not expecting any new snow to fall, but what's already fallen will be blowing around in the uh, winds and could create visibilities less than a half mile at times anywhere along any stretch of the arctic coast especially tomorrow it'll be mostly on the eastern beaufort sea coast as conditions improve out west and for the susitna valley that's winter weather advisory which is uh out for uh this evening or for tonight or for 4 p.m uh saturday to 4 p.m sunday just to put it simply and that's for, uh, uh, let's see, five to 10 inches of snow to fall, most, and that's north and west of Talkeetna, uh, in the usual heavier snowfall areas there with lighter amounts um, south of the area. And that's about it. Winter weather advisory also for the Eastern Alaska range there for gusty winds, snow and blowing snow. And again, visibility is down to about half a mile. And from there, moving on to satellite imagery, you can see uh, not too bad clearing over the Gulf of Alaska and uh, clouds, uh, well, Southern Cook Inlet has some clearing as well and then clouds sliding into Kodiak Island but some clearing over the Alaska Peninsula with all the moisture heading southwest to northeast there, frontal boundary back over toward the Adak Atka area up across the Pribilovs and a warm front uh, lifting north of the Alaska Peninsula. In fact, uh, temperatures are pushing 50 degrees I believe at uh, Cold Bay or on the peninsula there with the clearing and the warmer temperatures behind the warm front, definitely warmer, and the warmer air sliding into the interior. And that overrunning the cold air, uh, anywhere from three to six inches of snow has fallen from the uh, Fairbanks area westward in toward uh, Norton Sound uh, with the snowfall today. Lighter as you head north there to uh, not much at all up uh, along the Arctic coast and North Slope with the cold air mass locked in place up there. Uh, not too bad, uh, drier today over the panhandle there was some uh, scattered shower activity down there along with what appears to be some uh, sunshine as well, especially over the inside waters, North Gulf Coast, uh, even more clearing there. And out west uh, improves over the far western bearing, Commodorsky's uh, next ridge of high pressure building, but that'll be shifting eastward as well as the entire pattern uh, is still in a uh, west to east uh, movement there along with the uh, system. So we'll kind of have a repeat with high pressure followed by low pressure here for the next several days. Currently low pressure driving it over the uh, Seward Peninsula there in that warm front and the moderate to heavy snowfall extending in uh, north of the uh, southeast interior, Copper River Basin dry today, and then north of the Alaska Range, uh, snow on the increase there with good southwest flow and you can see the warmer temperatures and you get to kind of a mixed precipitation over the uh, southern Cuscombe Valley out to the Cuscombe Delta, uh, changing mostly rain, Togiak Bay, Cape Newenham, out toward the Pribilofs, and then down to that next weaker system over the uh, central Aleutians. And I mentioned behind that, ridging beginning to develop there over the far western Bering Sea, Shimmy and Attu. Ahead of that next system, you can see the tightening gradient there over Kamchatka Peninsula and the main system in the Sea of Okutsk, and that's gonna be pushing eastward 
uh, over the next couple of days. Again, not too bad over the pan now. There's some uh, scattered areas of uh, light isolated rain or snow showers, uh, mostly rain at lower elevations, but not much uh, precipitation at all this afternoon. Some sunshine, nice over the Copper River Basin, and the Arctic coast uh, colder, and uh, North Slope as well. And uh, wind's not too much of a problem up there as of yet. And for tonight, again, the winter storm warnings through the central interior as we saw with the winter weather advisory along the Arctic coast and the Seward Peninsula winter weather advisory due to those winds kicking up as that low poles eastward. You'll see an increase in the winds, temperatures fall, and snow, the blowing snow will increase as well with a little bit of additional accumulation. Same thing for St. Lawrence Island. And the front pushing into the interior, warm front now up into the southern Yukon Flats area. And it looks like the central eastern Beaufort Sea coast will remain precipitation free. And some moisture in the southwest flow in a weak trough uh, begins to increase the moisture chances on the north coast of the Panhandle late tonight. High pressure uh, trying to hold on to the area there to keep it dry a little longer. But it looks like periods of rain for the Alaska Peninsula Eastern Aleutians. And the next system you can see moves into the Commodorskis as high pressure begins to build and extend northward and links up with the uh, high center over the Russian Far East for tomorrow. So there'll be a pretty formidable ridge axis from uh, Adak and Atka northward just west of the Pribilovs angling back into the Russian Far East. And that's gonna start as it moves eastward. That'll begin to dry it out, less wind and less precipitation as well as less clouds and increasing sunshine. Seward Peninsula, even the uh, northwest coast there. St. Lawrence Island, Pribilovs could be mostly sunny, Adak and Atka as well. Low pressure keeps it uh, wet over the Alaska Peninsula, a little breezy, not too bad as showers diminish over the Fox Islands tomorrow afternoon. And snow slowly ends from west to east uh, with the heaviest snow over toward the border tomorrow afternoon, but backside of that low center as it moves to the McKenzie River Delta will increase the uh, winds over the eastern Beaufort Sea and western, or er, I'm sorry, the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline and the eastern Brooks Range for blowing snow there and areas of snow gradually diminishing and becoming lighter throughout the day for the central eastern interior. And some uh, lingering moisture there, southwest flow keeps a uh, chance of showers in over the southeast coast. And now moving on to Monday, the entire pattern is shifting eastward. So the first system there is way off into Canada. Got some lingering moisture though, lingering areas of light snow over the eastern interior, Copper River Basin, all the way up to the Eastern Brooks Range. And high pressure though building inland uh, dries it out, light winds and mostly sunny skies. A little breezy, a little cooler south central Alaska, Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island. Winds begin to diminish tomorrow after, or for Monday afternoon as a chance of snow arrives on the southwest coast with, along with some blowing snow. Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence Island late in the day. Lows for tonight, upper 20s northern Panhandle, lower 30s to the south, near 30 for the north Gulf Coast. Lower 30s, uh, uh, let's see, Kanik Arm down across the Kenai Peninsula, upper 20s to sit in the valley, mid 20s Copper River Basin, mid 30s Kodiak Island, 25 to 30 for Bristol Bay, 20 to 25 for your lows for the uh, Tanana Valley, and then below zero, Brooks Range on out to the North Slope and Arctic Coast of the 15 to 25 below range, and below zero temperatures in the backside of that low pull the cold air southward across St. Lawrence Island once again. And for mid 20s for the Pribilofs, lower to mid 30s for the Aleutians, and mid to upper 30s, Alaska Peninsula. Highs tomorrow, 37 to 42, south central Alaska, above freezing, and uh, mostly in the 40s for the Panhandle, mid 40s Kodiak, lower to mid 30s Bristol Bay. Tanana Valley, uh, anywhere from 30 to 32, 35 there, as you can see, 37 at Eagle, 5 to 15 in the Brooks Range, and a shade below zero for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, near zero, Seward Peninsula to five above and uh, upper 30s, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. And for the lows, the following morning on Monday, mid-teens, Copper River Basin, and 10 to 20 for the Susitna Valley, mid-20s along the North Gulf Coast, 30s for the Panhandle, lower 30s, Kodiak Island, lower to mid-teens for Bristol Bay, below zero, North Slope Arctic Coast, and we've got highs in the 40s for the Southeast Coast on Monday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic for Sunday morning. You've got a lot of IFR with all the moisture in the system coming in and the snow into the interior there from uh, northern Seward Peninsula, eastward there, long and south of the Brooks Range, Kobukoyukuk Valleys, all the way to the eastern border. And then it gets a little uh, mix there uh, from the Alaska Range up across uh, toward Eagle with some marginal VFR and VFR thrown in. VFR, portions of Cook Inlet, western Kenai Peninsula there. 
IFR Prince William Sound and uh, into the Coast Range Southern Copper River Basin. Band of IFR there, Eastern Panhandle. Solid IFR for Bristol Bay from the central southern Cuscombe Valley. Iliamna Lake there, or actually most of the Cuscombe Valley. All of the Alaska Peninsula Fox Islands, marginal for the central western Aleutians up to the Firblos VFR. St. Matthew Island, Nunavak Island, North Slope in the Arctic Coast. And for the afternoon, Western uh, Arctic Coast, Central and Western Arctic Coast into the Notak Valley, Northwest Coast, Seward, Western Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, VFR down to Nunavak Island, marginal VFR there, Kuskokwim, Yukon River Valleys up uh, until you get to the flats there, VFR for the Yukon Flats, IFR Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast across the Central Brooks Range and down into the Kobuk Valley. Otherwise, my IFR there around the Greater Fairbanks area, Upper Tanaw Valley or so, and uh, narrow band down across, uh, say, the Talkeetnas and uh, into northern Prince William Sound. IFR for the Panhandle with some marginal VFR thrown in, and the next band of IFR coming into the western Bering Sea there, far western areas, Shimmy and Attu, with a break there at uh, from Chitka Island to Adak. And then for Monday morning, that IFR zone out west slides northeastward and uh, clips uh, St. Paul Island and overruns St. Matthew Island. VFR, uh, Chuck CC through the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, M much of the western interior now, uh, VFR. VFR for the Fox Islands, marginal VFR, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula to the Aleutian Range, VFR Kodiak Island and south of central Alaska, Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, good VFR, and some IFR, Brooks Range to the central uh, north slope, eastern north slope and Arctic coast as well. Solid IFR for the Panhandle extends up across Yakutat into the eastern Copper River Basin. Monday afternoon, next batch of IFR there streaming north, east northeastward onto the uh, southwest coast into the afternoon, Perbaloff Islands, western Aleutians and marginal VFR with some VFR thrown in, not too much though for the uh, Southeast Bering Sea, Fox Islands, Alaska Peninsula, good VFR, Kodiak Island up into the uh, Western interior, some marginal VFR there for the central interior areas up across the Yukon Flats, Panhandle marginal VFR with IFR toward the border, and Atuvik and Adigan both look IFR tomorrow as far as uh, flying conditions go, both approaches and Lake Clark and Merrill, call it marginal VFR, could possibly start out IFR, but I guess it'll be kind of a marginal type day. Actually, it could go VFR in the afternoon as well. Rainy, marginal VFR to VFR. <clears throat> Windy, mostly IFR throughout the day. Isabel, IFR, possibly going marginal. And Mintesta, VFR. Tanita, IFR, becoming marginal VFR, probably hopefully by noon or before. Portage, IFR to marginal. And Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels at the surface there. Southern Bering Sea, now a little farther to the south than today as the uh, ridge axis, the warm Actions there, the 2,000 foot freezing level comes up to the Kenai Peninsula tomorrow, 6,000 feet, Kodiak Island. Icing shaping up like this, a uh, band of uh, uh, a remnant band there with that weakening frontal system, western Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, and then some more icing of the isolated moderate rime variety coming into the western Bering Sea, far western Aleutians. And then areas of uh, icing there, North Slope, Brooks Range, and over the uh, central eastern interior and up along the North Gulf Coast in across the Panhandle. Jet stream, good southwest flow, upper low, cold upper level low there over the North Slope and westerlies coming out of the Russian Far East there. Stronger jet over the southwest Bering Sea at about 130 knots, but west southwest 100 to 125 there for Kodiak Island in the Copper River Basin. And at 9,000 feet, uh, Westerly, 60 knots coming in across Cook Inlet, 65 knots there up over the uh, Yukon Flats, 70 knots just uh, north of Yakutat and 3,000 feet lighter winds, much the same pattern west uh, southwest, 35 to 40 in the interior, 55 knots out west, moderate chop, Seward Peninsula, U lower and mid Yukon River valleys, as well as uh, the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, Kodiak Island. Look for uh, considerable moderate chops, especially for small aircraft, a little bumpy over the northern panhandle as well. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments, new and old, and how the, we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. 
And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, Tyros, back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. And, right. and an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other. Huh. And they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Look, look. Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. to Michelangelo. Oh, so apparently okay. Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply uh, allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. And we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano, you know, just take it with your iPhone, yeah. you can see a volcano going erupting. off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So what's a wavelength? Well, that's, a wavelength. The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength Whoa. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. A <laughs> micron is a unit of length, and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Yeah. A human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty to, short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other part okay. of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the, the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a, at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image. At 12 microns, we're seeing a heat signature here, really. And, and the way this color enhancement works is the, the yellow and the red stuff is, is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what, you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So 12 micron doesn't help us. Okay. Let's look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right, look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at, at 10.8. Mm -hmm. But when we take subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtract one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image huh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. 
Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job. Sure. Like they say, you open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want to find it. fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, wow. there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so oh. every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways of, observe, of the, observing the weather. Satellites the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Back uh, looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, sh a little bit less of the thicker ice here in Bristol Bay, not a whole lot from yesterday, and not much change along the ice edge out there. Uh, the heavier ice still north of St. Matthew Island and a little bit lesser just south of the island there. Not much change, uh, and the heavier ice south of the Forelands Cook Inlet is uh, dissipated now and is kind of restricted north of the Forelands. Moving on to coastal water forecasts, uh, not too bad wind-wise there along the southeast coast and the outer coastline. West to southwest, 15 knots, 6 to 7 foot seas. Lynn Canal will be the windiest place over there. Small craft advisory sustained 25 knots from the south with gale force gusts of 40 knots. Stevens Passage south at 20 with 4 foot seas and light southeast breeze for Clarence Strait at 10 knots. Outlook for Monday, central and southern inside waters, south winds 15 knots, seas 3 feet. Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay south at 20 with 4 foot seas. And from the entire outer coastline, winds will be southwest at 20 knots with seas running 8 to 9 feet. Prince William Sound, south at 20 tomorrow, 4 foot seas. Small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, west southwest winds 30 knots, 6 to 7 foot seas. Barren Island, southwest 30 knots, 8 foot seas. And uh, Cook Inlet, gale warnings, southwest 35 knots uh, with 16, or 14 to 16 foot seas. And for Kamishak Bay, west at 30 knots with 12 foot seas. And then those winds really drop off for Cook Inlet on Monday, uh, northwest 10, north of Forelands there, and 15 knots for southern Cook Inlet. And a uh, good gale zone for Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, northwest sustained 40 knots, 15 foot seas, small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, northwest 25, seas running about 9 feet, and Prince William Sound, northwest at 30 with 6 foot seas. And for Shilakoff Strait, gale warning, southwest 35 knots tomorrow, and Kodiak Island on the east side there, southwest at 30 knots, and that southwest 30 knot wind uh, goes all the way down the coastline there to Castle Cape, Castle Cape to uh, Cape Sarachev. Look for southwest winds at 25, 10 foot seas, uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, north of 20, with 8 foot seas, Bristol Bay, west winds 20 knots, and seas at 6 feet. For the day on Monday, small craft advisories now for Bristol Bay for southwest winds at 25 knots, Alaska Peninsula, and uh, all the way up to uh, Sitkanak there, uh, looking at a 30 knot wind out of the west. That's good for small craft advisories with 10 to 13 foot seas. East side of Kodiak, northwest at 30 and 25 knot northwest winds for Shelikoff Strait. On Alaska Island, north to northwest, 20 to 25 knots tomorrow, 8 to 10 foot seas. Unmak Island, mostly 25 knots with 10 to 11 foot seas. Adak and Atka, north at 20, 8 foot seas. Amchitka Island, southwest 25, seas 8 feet. Kiska sh and Shimianatu, south at 30 with 10 foot seas. Outlook for Monday, gale warnings there, uh, southwest 40 knots uh, for Shimia, Atu, and Kiska, and Chitka Island, southwest 35 knots, Adak and Atka, southwest 30 to 35 knots, 9 to 14 foot seas, 
And Mac Island Southwest at 30, Unalaska Island West at 30. And for the Southwest Coast, Northwest 20 knots tomorrow. Also for St. Matthew Island, North 20 knots for the Perbloffs with eight foot seas. First wind advisories for Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island for West Northwest winds at 25 knots. Uh, west at 10 for Norton Sound on Monday and East at 20 for St. Lawrence Island. And brisk wind advisories, Yukon Delta Coast, east 30 knots, east 30 St. Matthew Island, southwest 30 with 13-foot seas for the Perbolos and south winds at 30 knots and seas at 8 feet for the uh, Cuscombe Delta Coast. And up along the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, look for northeasterlies at 20 knots tomorrow and 15 knots on the northeast on the central coast. Turn north at 15 on the west side. Brisk wind advisories there from uh, Cape Bullfort down to Wales for 25 to 30 knot winds. Those will be much lighter on Monday there from Wales to Cape uh, Beaufort west at 10, 15 knot westerlies on the western coast, and then 10 to tw 10 knots on the central coast, 15 to 20 knot westerlies for the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast. For tonight, winter storm warnings uh, end at 7 p.m. for the uh, Yukon Delta, and then gradually end from uh, west to east here over the next uh, day, day and a half. Uh, Actually, 7 p.m. Sunday there for the upper mid and upper or for the upper Tanah Valley eastward. They'll be out until 7 p.m. tomorrow for 8 to 15 inches of snow. Uh, Winter weather advisories for the Arctic coast due to uh, snow and blowing snow, reducing visibility to half a mile with 35 knot winds. Snow chances increase across southern Alaska tonight and rain for the eastern Aleutians. High pressure builds eastward out over the Bering Sea during the day tomorrow as that system pulls off to the east and weakens. And then for Monday. Uh, Transition, next storm comes into the southwest coast, high pressure moves into the interior, and that's all I've got time for. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.